Welcome back guys. We are finally back on the 308 today. You guys have been very patient with me and I appreciate it. Today, I wanna to focus on getting that pedal box that we made a few episodes ago all finished up. Now there's a bunch of welding to do on this thing, so I spent a lot of time with the TIG torch making it all one piece. It's my biggest TIG project yet and I'm reasonably happy with how it came out. We've also gotta figure out what master cylinders we're gonna run with our brake setup, which is crucial on a manual brake system like this. There's a lot of math that goes into it, so we'll touch briefly upon that. And then we need to take all of those parts, the box, the pedals, and the master cylinders and get them all installed in the 308 so we can cross it off of the list. Now I also wanna make some progress at the back of the car because my buddy Brett has welded up our thick aluminum wing uprights. And if we install those, fabricate some diagonal cross bracing to give it some stability, we should be ready for when Amir from RS Future brings us our rear wing element, which fingers crossed we should have for Tuesday's episode. Now don't forget to subscribe if you have, and it helps me out. And we are back to being hammered down on this project, so you don't wanna miss any of the progress. Let's get this thing done. A few weeks ago, we drew up the pedal box that we're gonna need for the Ferrari project in Fusion 360. We sent these files out to Send, Cut, Send, and when they came back, we folded them up, tacked them together, and we were left with a loosely functional pedal box that we mocked up in the car as a proof of concept. But that's really only the halfway point towards completion. Now, we need to weld it together. I'm using a Miller Dynasty 200 TIG welder, and it's perfect for a sheet metal job like this. We're going by the rule of thumb of using one amp for every thousandth of material thickness. This stuff is 065 and I'm giving ourselves a little bit of headroom. Because I'm a total TIG amateur and have to sharpen my tungsten all the time, I'm using lanthanated tungsten because it doesn't have the same radioactive particles that thoriated tungsten does. It's a lot safer to grind and just be around in general and it works all the same, so it's my tungsten of choice. Because we're so close to the ocean here, a bit of surface rust has collected on our pedal box since the last episode it was featured in, so I've cleaned up the edges before getting down to business. This box is made up of seven individual pieces, so it's going to require a lot of welding to complete. My first few welds may have been a little bit rough, but by the end of this thing I really felt like I was getting the hang of it. Here you can see in real time the snail's pace at which I'm moving at, so you can understand how this thing took me a few hours to weld up in its entirety. With the basis of the box complete, it's time to test fit the pedals once again, and we need to confirm fitment of that outer reinforcement plate. Because we've applied so much heat to this sheet metal structure, it wouldn't be surprising if it has moved around and warped a little bit. Thankfully, it still fits like a glove. Once we turn it up on end though, we can see that there is one problem at hand, and it's the lower ear on the cylinder doesn't clear this flange right here. This is a problem of me not having the cylinder on hand when I actually designed this thing, and forgetting to account for it, truth be told. This is admittedly pretty easy to solve for though. I'm simply going to cut some notches for clearance in the flange so that the ears will clear the sheet metal. A small cutoff wheel makes quick work of the 16th inch sheet metal, and a hand file does most of the work for the cleanup. Although if I'm being honest, I got a little bit lazy and pulled out that air power file to clean up the rest of it. And then of course, there's even more welding, affixing all of the edges of this reinforcement plate to the sheet metal behind it. With everything welded up, we can confirm fitment one more time of that cylinder, and thankfully it fits rather well. Putting the hardware on sandwiches all of these pieces together nice and tight and gives us a very rigid box. I'm really happy with how this thing has taken shape, and I feel pretty good about it not flexing once we mount it in the car, although we'll have to see once we're really standing on the pedal in the future. After all of the welding, I gave this thing a bit of a cleanup to get the rest of that surface rust off, and it really does look pretty decent. The last welding project for this pedal box is to attach it to its base plate, which is one more perimeter weld around the entire thing. I do wish the welds on this box had come out a little bit better, but I'm not disappointed with my progress as an amateur TIG welder, and I think once it's all powder coated, it should look halfway decent. Now, let's talk master cylinders. I'm gonna be using Tilton's 76 series master cylinders for a couple of very important reasons. 
One is that they are very compact in size. They don't protrude very much from the pedal box, but they do retain the standard amount of throw inside of the cylinder. The second is that they have two fittings for outlets, one on the back and one on the top, which gives us a bit of versatility to clear what we need to under the hood. And it may look empty now, but there's gonna be a huge piece of ductwork there in the future. So this is important to plan ahead. We're gonna be using a three quarter inch bore master cylinder for both the brakes and the clutch. Now you guys know me, you know I love explaining things, teaching things, and trying to answer questions for how I've gotten to a certain conclusion. In this case, how to decide what master cylinder sizing we're gonna run, because there's a lot of different sizes and it's very important, especially on a manual brake setup like this. Now, I thought about explaining all of the math that goes into figuring this out, and I recorded a segment only to realize that it's really boring and all of the numbers are only relevant for my car and it doesn't really help you guys. So if you wanna know how to do the math, I'm gonna put a link in the description and it'll tell you how to go through that process. But it requires a lot of information because you're gonna to need to try to figure out the bore sizing of your master cylinder, but you're gonna to need to know the weight of your car, the weight distribution of your car, what brakes you're gonna be running, the number of pistons and the overall piston surface area. You're gonna to need to try to derive your line pressure. You're gonna to need to know the pedal box ratio. You're also gonna to need to know the aerodynamics at play if you've got an aero package on your car. There's a lot of different variables and it's a lot of math to do. So I would just suggest doing what I did and call your brake manufacturer and ask for some help. I called up AP, gave them all of those variables and they told me exactly where I should start which is with some three quarter master cylinders front and rear. And if we need to change them down the line we can but this is where we're gonna begin. At this point the pedal box is finished save for a hole we need to drill for a bias adjuster in the future. But we can go on and assemble this entire setup and put it in the car to confirm that it works and get moving towards plumbing this setup. It's admittedly pretty cool to see this transform from a CAD file to a real life finished part. It's definitely one of my biggest transformations yet. Fitting it into the car confirms that it does indeed bolt into the factory mounts and that's definitely a rewarding feeling. This pedal box solved a couple of important issues that we were facing. The first being the need to convert to manual brakes and the second being the need to seal the pedals from the outside of the car. And of course, for the cherry on top, I had to press the pedals. And to get to press them and have them return by hand and to have nothing flopping around, this felt fantastic. Now with the pedal box installed, let's take a quick moment and talk about clutch stops because the Ferrari doesn't have one and we're going to need one due to the throw out bearing setup that we're gonna be using. Now a clutch stop exists to make sure that you don't overextend the throw out bearing and compress the fingers on the pressure plate too far and you can cause all sorts of damage. You really, really do not wanna do that. And a lot of aftermarket clutch setups require you to set a clutch stop. I'm gonna show you the one on the Model A real quick so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now if we dive way down in here, you can see the clutch stop that I have mounted right here. It's just a bolt uh, with a, I mean, there's a whole assembly welded inside of this, but I can adjust this bolt here in and out to actually set the overall limit of the clutch. And so the clutch can't travel past a certain point because this will prevent it. And this allows adjustability, it's really simple. It's about as basic as it gets. So what we're gonna need to do is build a system just like this in the Ferrari so that we don't overextend our new clutch setup. Now the last item on our brake and clutch setup that we need to discuss today is reservoirs. And I've bought this Tilton triple reservoir unit that we need to install in a future episode. But the benefit here is that it not only has all three reservoirs in one, but three AN fittings on the bottom, which will make plumbing nice and easy. Now, in that same send cut send order that our pedal box arrived in, we got the bases to our rear wing uprights, and we need to get these welded together. I'm not so sure I have the machine nor the talents to do this job, so I enlisted the help of my friend, Brett Walker over at Nimmo Machine to lend a hand. These thick pieces of aluminum needed to be heated extensively before they could be welded and made one. And that's only one of the challenges faced when working with parts like this. 
Brett put a lot of work into making sure these parts would not warp or distort while welding either because they do need to be true and upright. There were also a few hiccups along the way with the welder, but once the kinks were sorted out, Brett made it look easy as he always does. I'll take any opportunity I can to sing his praises. Brett is not only one of the nicest, but one of the most skilled guys I know. And here we have the finished parts. They need a little bit of cleanup, but they look fantastic and I'm excited to get them bolted into the car. Now we need to make some braces for these things. So let me show you the hardware. So this is basically just a solid rod end and the concept is to thread this uh, through our wing upright to give us a point to mount an actual rod end. So we'll join these through like this. It is single shear, but this should be more than strong enough for what we're doing with it. So we've got these guys and then I bought some nice 12 point hardware for them just to kind of dress it up, make it look a little bit better. Some nice washers and then the rod ends that we will actually put into our hex bar that will be the brace itself. So let's machine this stuff down, thread and tap, install these guys and put this whole setup in the car. The lathe has been working so much better ever since Brett really dialed it in, so I've looked for any excuse possible to use it. It's the perfect tool for this job, which is to drill the ends, tap them, and to taper the ends to give us a bit of a stylized look. Think of this as a giant pencil sharpener for aluminum. With the proper sized hole drilled in the end of this thing, it's time to thread it to M8 by 125. Now I know that there are other ways to do this other than by hand using a lathe, but I'm not quite skilled enough to go that route yet, so I'm doing it the old fashioned way. It's reliable, and I know I won't mess it up. Here we've got one finished end, and I know I need to do some cleanup on the actual rod itself, but I think this will look pretty good all said and done. If we repeat this process four more times, we wind up with a pair of finished support rods. I changed course just a touch, and I've put one solid rod end and one actual heim joint on each end of these, and I'll show you why here in a moment. Next, we've got to install the solid rod ends on our wing uprights, although we do need to shorten them later down the road. And with everything mounted together and in the car, I think these things are looking pretty sweet. They do a lot for the empty space in the back end, and I think they're gonna do a great job of supporting our wing. They're gonna be nice and sturdy and strong, and they look good. And here's the final assembly loosely in place. As I said, we've gotta cut this guy down. We'll cut it nice and flush with the bolt. I'll put it in the lathe or something and get it all nice and tidy. And then down here, I need to fabricate a, uh, a mount for this, and I wanted to get that done in this episode, but unfortunately, it's getting late, and I still have to edit this one. And I'm gonna find some nice hardware to go in here so we can bolt it all down. But home stretch, just a couple of metal tabs for this thing. We'll get them right here, get them welded down, and this whole project, we can call it done. I'm pretty excited about it, honestly. I think they look pretty good. And with the wing supports set up in the car, although it's not fully finished, we're gonna call this at least done for the day. I'm gonna wrap this project up over the weekend for the next episode. As I said, there's only a few bolts we gotta throw in there and make two little tabs. Should be nice and easy, at least I think. We'll find out. I'm gonna have to cut this one off here. It has been a very full day. I've gotta get home and get this edited. The sun is down, it's after five. This is going to be a long night, but I will see you guys in the morning. Thank you as always for the support. I'll catch you guys on Tuesday.